Good morning interweb, this is where we left off last time. I did a little bit of work off camera, as usual. I fixed up the stroke a little bit, and I also scaled my artboard back down to A3. A2 was way too much, I don't know why I did that. In this video, we're gonna start looking at some page elements. Borders, graticule grids, cartouches, north arrows, that kind of thing. So I'm gonna go down here, I'm gonna hit new layer, I'm gonna call this border. I'm going to hit M on my keyboard and I'm going to draw a rectangle somewhere up here. Now I want this rectangle to be 12 deep, that's just the value I have settled on. You go with whatever suits, just make sure you stay consistent between pages of your atlas. So 12 millimeters, done. I'm going to make sure align to artboard is selected and I'm going to align to the top. Then I'm going to go Command C to copy, Command F to paste in place, and then I'm going to align this to the bottom. Going to hit M again to bring up the rectangle tool, or it's over here, and I am going to click and drag a shape like this. The width of this I want to be nine millimeters, and then I'm going to left align this, go Command C, Command F, and then right align. And hey presto, we have just created a border around our map. I'm gonna select all of them, hit G to group. Next up, I'm gonna hit M on the keyboard and I'm gonna draw a rectangle inside the border we just created like so. I'm gonna hit Shift X on my keyboard to flip the fill in the stroke. I'm gonna double click on the stroke. I am going to select a black color. I'm gonna go up to the stroke menu here, click. I'm gonna make sure my stroke is on the inside and I'm gonna give it a weight of five pixels. Again, that's just the dimensions I have settled on. You can play around with it. Important thing is just be consistent between pages of your atlas. Make a little style guide document to make sure everything is the same throughout your entire work. I am going to click on my newly drawn shape. I'm going to go to object, path, outline stroke. So that takes the stroke and makes it its own shape. Okay, so next up we're going to work on graticules. Remember, graticules are lines of longitude and latitude. So I'm going to unlock my template layer here so I can see it. I'm going to lock it again. I'm going to hit P on my keyboard to bring up the pen tool. Alternatively, you can come up over here. And all I'm going to do is trace over these graticules. So if I go Z on my keyboard, I can zoom in a little bit. And as close as possible, click somewhere in the middle of these guidelines. Command zero zooms back out again and then I'm going to hold shift to constrain my line vertically and just click anywhere again. Hit Z on my keyboard to zoom in, check if everything's gravy and it's good enough for the sake of this video. Command zero zoom out. I'm going to hit Z again on my keyboard. I'm going to zoom over all the needed graticules here. Hit V, select my graticule, hit command C, command F to copy and paste in place, drag and as best as possible to get it in the middle here. Then go Command C to copy, Command F to paste, drag, get it somewhere in the middle there, Command C, Command F, drag, somewhere in the middle, Command C, Command F, drag, somewhere in the middle. Now obviously you can be a lot more precise than this, again just demonstration purpose here. I'm also going to select them and give them a bigger stroke. Just for now so I can see them. Command zero to zoom back out. Again, P on the keyboard to bring up the pen tool. I'm going to click somewhere here, hold shift, click somewhere there. I'm going to zoom in, hit V. I'm just going to nudge it into the middle. Something like that, command zero. And repeat as before, Command C, Command F, drag, somewhere in the middle. Done. Again, you can take your time and be more precise than this. Now, if your graticule lines are curved, as they will be in, say, equidistant conic projection, you can hit uh, V on your keyboard to select a straight line that you've drawn. Hit P to bring up the pen tool, hold down the Alt key and hover over the line until you see this curvy shape and then click and drag. And you can drag out a curve. And depending on where in the line you are, when you click and drag out the curve, you get different results. So if I were to go up here, I would get a curve like this. 
If I were to go down here, I would get a curve like that, etc. So I am going to select all the lines I've just drawn and I'm going to hit command G to group them together and I'm also going to give them no stroke. And then with shift held, I'm going to select my black border shape here, click on it. So I've selected all the lines, now invisible because they have no stroke, plus that border. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit K on my keyboard for the live paint tool or you can go over to this chap here. I'm going to select a white color for my fill. I'm going to hit Z on my keyboard to zoom in somewhat. Now what the live paint bucket tool is that it creates shapes based on all the shapes you've selected. So if I click in this segment, it'll create a shape that conforms to the stroke lines we've just drawn and this is exactly what we want. So I'm going to go over to my paint bucket tool here, select black. Hit OK and then click this guy. No change, obviously, but that's OK. And we're going to alternate black and white the whole way around, just clicking on each segment. And if you've done all that correctly, you should end up with a grid that looks something like this. So let's click back on that and then let's hit expand. Now our white segments are hidden, so we're going to give everything a stroke. So click on everything, bring the stroke panel to the front, double click, select the black, hit OK. Click on the stroke panel, make sure the stroke's on the inside and you will get something that looks like that. Next up, I'm going to create a new layer again. I'm going to call this Graticule. I'm going to bring this below my border layer. Next, I'm going to mark in my Graticules again, except this time I'm going to skip every second Graticule. But it's the same method as before. P on the keyboard to bring up the pen tool, then click somewhere in the middle of your template, hold shift and click again. So if you've done all that correctly, it should look something like this. Then I'm going to select all of my new Graticules and I am going to give them the same blue color as my rivers. Something like that. So hopefully you'll be left with a white border, a black and white checkered grid that has one black and one white segment per Graticule marked in on the map. Also, at this point, it's worth noting that the convention for atlases is that the top of the page is north. So you shouldn't just arbitrarily rotate your land masses to like best fit the page. You want to make sure the top of the page is always north. It just helps orientate the reader. A really easy way of achieving this is to ensure that at least one of your longitude lines, this chap for example, is parallel to page edge, i.e. north is straight up. Now that isn't an issue in Mercator projection because all the graticules are parallel to page edges, but in other projections like Equidistant Conic that have curved graticule lines, ensure at least one is pointing straight up, i.e. it is parallel to the page edge, if that makes sense. If I have time, hopefully I'll do an Equidistant Conic map just to show you how it's done. Anywho, let's get labeling. So I'm going to turn back on my template layer here because we need to mark in the degrees that each of these graticule lines represent. So from the previous video, we know that this guy here is zero degrees. So this chap here is going to be one degree. This is going to be three degrees and this is going to be five degrees. So let's let's mark that in. I'm going to hit Z on my keyboard again to just zoom in. I'm going to bring up T on my keyboard for the text tool. I am just going to type anywhere for now. I'm going to type in my degrees. Alt zero, it brings up a degree symbol and I'm going to center align this. So now I'm going to click and drag and align it on the correct graticule. So then, and I feel like this is nearly the title of this episode, Command C, Command F, click and hold shift and drag until it snaps on the next graticule line. Hit T again for your text tool and type in three degrees. Command C, Command F, click and drag holding shift until it snaps, command T and type in five. Cool, now let's figure out our lines of latitude. So we know again from the previous video, we know that this chap here is 30 degrees north. So 
and each of our graticules represents one degree. So 30, 29, 28, 27, 26 starts on 25 here. So let's type those in. Same shtick as before. Bingo, and now we're going to go ahead and label our grids. So convention here is that we're going to label the top and bottom alphabetically. So A, B, C, A, B, C, and we're going to label the sides numerically. One, two, three, four. I'm going to hit T on my keyboard to bring up text tool, click anywhere again. I'm going to type in a uppercase A. I'm going to change the font to a serif just for the sake of it. And I'm also going to make it bigger, just slightly though, just to differentiate between the grid labeling and the graticule labeling. I'm going to make it bold, I think. Yeah, and I'm also going to make it an outlined shape. Mm, if this works, I don't know if it does. Let me see. Mm, yeah, that kind of works. Maybe I should increase it. I oh, will see, we'll see. So now I'm going to drag this and I'm going to center it on the first checker. And I'm also going to make sure they're aligned. Same shtick as before, Command C, Command F, click and drag, and then change the text. So time lapse mode again, see you in a bit. Labeling, done. Next, we're gonna tackle the issue of scale. There's a little bit of maths involved here, but it's not too bad. Let's start off by hitting Command N for a new document. I'm going to make this a A3 document, uh, millimeters, and I am going to call this cartouche template. A cartouche is basically just a box on a map that contains information about the map, like the title, what projection is being used, and the scale. So hit create. Now the way scale is often shown on an atlas map is in the form of a representative fraction and or a scale bar. A representative fraction usually looks something like this. And if we're dealing with metric, it basically means one centimeter on the map is however many millions of centimeters in real life. The convention is generally to work with centimeters. Scale bars depict visually what this representative fraction is showing numerically. So to create both of these, we need to know distances on our map. To do this, we're going to go back to our map. We're going to hit P on our keyboard. We're going to find a latitude towards the center of our map. So in my case, I'm going to go with the 23rd parallel north, and we're going to draw a line along that latitude from longitudinal line to longitudinal line. Remember, if your graticules are curved, curve your line. Now, if we go up to here, we can see that this line measures 114 millimeters. So let's make a note of that. So 114.22 millimeters is the equivalent of two degrees of longitude. Because if we go back to our map, we see one degree, three degrees, so that spans two degrees. That line spans two degrees of longitude. Now we want this in centimeters, so we have to ask if this is equal to two degrees, therefore 10 millimeters, i.e. one centimeter, is equal to how many degrees? We multiply these two terms and divide by that term. So that's 2 times 10 divided by 114.22, and we get 0.175 degrees. So 10 millimeters on our map is equal to 0.175 degrees of longitude. So to find out the exact distance of this, we use this formula. 2 pi times the radius of the planet times the cosine of the latitude we just used times theta over 360, where theta is this value we determined there. So if we plug and chug, we'll say two pi. So I'm gonna say my planet is the same size as Earth. 
we want this in centimeters. So if I recall correctly, that's 637 million 100,000 centimeters. I think that's correct. Hold on. Uh, radius of Earth in centimeters. 637.1 million. Yep. And then we do the cosine of the latitude we use. So if we go back to our map, we use 23 degrees. Cosine of 23 degrees on theta, which is 0 0.175 over 360. Whack out the old calculator and ensure it's in degrees mode and not radians mode. So plugging and chugging gives us an answer of 1791220 centimeters. That is one centimeter, aka 10 millimeters, is basically 1.8 million centimeters in real life. And so a representative fraction, which usually gets rounded to one to two sig figs, would be something like one is to one eight zero 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 zero. One centimeter is 1.8 million centimeters or one centimeter is 18 kilometers. So now let's use that information to craft a scale bar. So if I take this line and I make it one centimeter, aka 10 millimeters. I know that that line represents 18 kilometers now. Let's make a line that represents exactly 100 kilometers. So we basically have to ask how many times does 18 fit into 100? Basic maths here, 100 divided by 18 is 5.55 recurring. So I can take this and I can multiply this by 5.55555555, hit okay. And now we have a line exactly 100 kilometers long. So we can take this, we can bring it over to our cartouche template here. I'm gonna pop it over here. So the most rudimentary of scale bar looks like this. P on the pen tool, align with left edge here, hold shift to ensure that your line is perpendicular. Click again, hold, keep holding shift to ensure that it's parallel. Align to this side, click, still holding shift, and then snap it and click. And let's take our stroke down to something a little bit nicer. Something like that. T on your keyboard, bring up the text tool. Let's put in zero. Gonna center align that. And then I'm going to make this say a 10 point. I'm gonna make it, give it a nice font. And I'm gonna align it here. Command C, Command F. Drag it over until it aligns to the other side. And then we'll make this 100. Command C, Command F drag this until it aligns with the center of our shape and I'm going to write in kilometers. So that right there is the most rudimentary of scale bars. You could also do a thing like this. Let me just copy this chap. We can take this. Let's move him out here and we can also create a subdivision here. Hit P on your keyboard align to the bottom here and then align to the center of your shape click hold shift and click again and then drag this chap out here because this is exactly half we know that this chap is 50. so that's uh, another way of showing scale a third way is to include uh, different units so imperial and metric for example and that is usually done like this so i'll select all this here Hit Command C, Command F. I'm going to hover just on the corner here until I get the rotate icon. Then I'm going to click, hold Shift, and rotate around to constrain it to 45 degrees, into 45 degree increments. Let go, and then move it on top here. Bring it down so it looks nice. So if I do a conversion here, one mile is 1.61 kilometers. So I select this shape, and I multiply it by 1.61 to convert that into miles. And then I'm going to align it. Command C, Command F on the figures, align them nicely. And boom, this is my preferred way of doing scale bars. And in the world building context, it's always cool to play with your own measuring systems. So there's a good bit of character that can be brought to a map just using doing this alone. And finally, there's the uh, more blocky version, which you may be interested in. So let me create a 
box here representing 100 kilometers. I'm gonna make it quite thin and drag this bio down. So command C, command F copies that. I'm going to divide that by two to get a line that is 50 kilometers long. Command C, command F, divide that by two again to get a line that is 25 kilometers long and command C, command F. This one I'm going to divide by five and I'm going to drag this down. So I have a line here that's 100 kilometers, 50 kilometers, 25 kilometers and five kilometers. So now I'm going to use these to make a scale bar. So command C, command F, let's drag this bio down. I'm going to make four copies, command C, command F, 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 F. Drag these all out. And I'm going to alternate the color on these. So five kilometers, 10 kilometers, 15 kilometers, 20 kilometers, 25 kilometers. Let's add in another 25 kilometers to make that 50. I on the keyboard to select this color. Let's add another 50 to make that 100. And command C, command F, let's add another 50 to make it 150, say. Going to group these all together. I'm going to click on the stroke panel here and I'm going to give it a nice black color. Making sure the strokes on the inside and I'm going to reduce it way, 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 way down. Something like that. And then I'm going to copy this just like before to make a miles bar. Uh, this time I'm going to clip it right on to the kilometers bar. I'm going to go to the width here and I'm going to multiply this by 1.61, wasn't it? I think it was. And then I'm going to drag it, snap it again, and boom, a set of bars. Now we can make this look prettier by adding in just some extra detail. Let's add in some notches. So for now, I'm just going to do this and Command C, Command F, drag it so it snaps all the way along. And then we put in all the numbers. So there you go, four ways of showing scale bars on an atlas. Oh, and now that I think about it, another thing you can do is you can place your representative fraction up on top here if you want and you can do the same things here and well less so here but on certainly in these two you put the representative fraction on top this is quite a modern look if you're going for like a an old older type look uh, you do a verbal fraction i think it is where it's more akin to spoken language as it is to a mathematical ratio so something like 10 centimeters is equal to 18 kilometers but that's quite an old look uh, i much prefer this chap so there you go some scale bars so with those done let's make the cartouche so i'm going to take my favorite scale bar this chap i'm going to command c command f also command g to group it and i'm going to drag it down here to to be used in my cartouche i'm going to hit p on my keyboard for the pen tool and somewhere above here I am going to draw a line. I'm going to hold shift so I can constrain it to, uh, to horizontal. And just somewhere along here. This is called a neat line and it's used to keep text nice and neat. Hit T on my keyboard to bring up the text tool. And now I'm going to write scale. And I'm going to write in my scale. One is to 1,800,000. And I'm going to write projection and it's going to be Mercator, but I am going to align those nicely. Now that text is way too small, so I'm going to say maybe, maybe 14, 14 point text looks good to me. I am going to align this and I'm going to drag this down somewhat, make another neat line. So I'm just going to copy the one I have 
And then on top here, I'm gonna write the title of my map. So for me, it's always gonna be of the form continent region. So continent pipe region. So if I was like mapping the world and I wanted to map Scandinavia, for example, I would write Europe, Scandinavia there. Uh, because it's a title, I'm gonna use a serif font. So this chap, I'm gonna make it bigger, much bigger. Something like that. I am going to make the continent part nice and bold. So I have like this visual hierarchy going on. And I'm also gonna make this small cap. So I'm gonna highlight that, go up to character, click, and then hit the small caps key. So I think, I think that looks pretty tasty. Now around that, I'm gonna draw a box. So M on the keyboard to bring up the rectangle tool. And just for now, I'm gonna draw any old box like that. I'm going to give it a white fill. And a black stroke, and then I'm gonna hit command shift left square bracket to send it down to the bottom of the stack. Now I'm gonna fiddle this around a little bit just so I get something that I think looks pretty tasty. Boom! I'm gonna go command C, command F on that box. I'm gonna go command shift left square bracket to send it down the stack. Now I wanna scale this box, but if I do the usual scaling, which is hold shift, hold alt and shift, and then click and drag you're gonna see that it won't scale uniformly on all sides. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm just gonna add values onto the height and the width. So if I add say six millimeters onto the width, that means you're gonna add three millimeters to the width each side, something like that. And then I'm gonna add another six here, something like that, that's not too bad. I'm gonna select the stroke and I'm gonna make it an inside stroke and I'm gonna bring the stroke up a bit. So I am going to select this and I'm gonna drag it into my main map and I'm gonna place it and I'm gonna move it down to the bottom corner here is where I think I want it. Now it's a little bit huge compared to the rest of this map so now I'm gonna spend a little bit of time just editing it, editing it down into something I really like. And there you go, cartouche done. Next up, we should mark in what our topographies are depicting. So I have one, two, three, four sea level layers and one, two, three, four land layers included in this map. So I'm gonna zoom way, way, way out so I can see my color palette. So I'm gonna hit A on my keyboard to bring up the direct selection tool. Alternatively, it is over here. And then I'm gonna select one, two, three, four. Those are my C levels. And one, two, three, four. Those are my land levels. I'm gonna hit Command C to copy. Gonna go over to my cartouche template, hit Command F. I'm uh, gonna zoom out because they're somewhere here. There they are. I'm gonna shrink them down and now I'm gonna start making a secondary kind of cartouche-like thing with those topographies filled in.
All right, so those are our cartouches in. We have one for plain information, another for topographies. This video has gone on for quite a while, so I'm gonna stop it there for today. In the next video, we're gonna look at north arrows or compass roses, that kind of thing. Hope you enjoyed, and I hope to see you soon. Good morning, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please, please, please check out Nathan Manjohn's work. This whole series is built on his workflow. Without him, this series wouldn't have happened. Links are in the description. Go check out his work. He is a wonderful fantasy cartographer. As always, thank you so much for watching my videos and a massive thanks goes out to all the wonderful folks over on Patreon who make artifacts in a possibility, including Alexander Roper, Andrew Pisha Hale, John Huyer, Rip Tapasse, Spencer Brownlee, and World Anvil. Until next time, it grips.